Okay, so thank you everybody. It's great to see such a wonderful turnout this morning. Uh, thank you to Mitja and the organizers for inviting me to be here today to talk to you about 4T research data and data stewardship. So I'd like to just point out that I have made these slides available on Zenodo for you to download. So if at any point you do have any questions after this event and you want to get in contact with me, then you are welcome to do that. You can send me an email at any point and I will do my best to answer. So uh, Mitja has already introduced me. Um, my name is Connie Clare and I am the community manager at 42 Research Data. So I started this role in October last year after uh, studying a PhD at the University of Nottingham. And I studied developmental biology. So you can see here in the top right hand corner, we have a picture of two sheep. And that is because I used sheep as a biological model to study maternal nutrition and embryo development. So I was interested in what the mother eats and how this affects embryonic development. And you can see here in this second picture, here is myself and one of my PhD uh, colleagues as we were suited and booted, ready to head down to the barn to feed and blood sample the sheep. And in this third picture here, you can see, it might be familiar to some of you, this is Delft University of Technology's library. So partway through my PhD, um, I traveled over to the Netherlands to work at TU Delft for three months as an intern back in 2019. And my role as an intern was to work with the data stewards and also the data champions to find out what they do, some of their roles and responsibilities to advocate for proper research data management and open science within their faculties and departments. So the topics that I'd like to cover in this session today, I'd like to give you an introduction to 4 u research data. And this is a data repository, but it's a consortium of three Dutch technical universities. I'll then talk about the importance of data stewardship and why we think it's important to have data stewards within institutions. I'll then give you an overview of how data stewardship is organized. And I'll give this as an example from Delft University of Technology. And then I'll give you an introduction to the 20 data stewards that are part of the 40U partner organizations. Um, and then I'll show you which faculties and, and departments they're embedded in and some of their interests. And then I'll give you a bit of an overview as to what the data stewards do, so what their roles and responsibilities are and how they're trained uh, in their roles as data stewards. And then finally, we'll take a look at the 40 research data community and how the data stewards are integrated um, with the other data support staff and researchers. So let's begin. Uh, what is 40 research data? So it's an international data repository for science, engineering, and design disciplines. So it's a disciplinary repository that's available to researchers all around the world. So any researcher in any institution can publish their data in 4 research data. And the aim is to facilitate the curation, sharing, access, and long-term preservation of research data. And to this end, the repository has the core trust seal of approval. So it's a certified and trusted repository, and we're just in the process of renewing this core trust seal at the moment. And the repository was founded back in 2010, and this was part of the 40U Federation. So the 40U stands for four technical universities, but three of these universities are actually driving the initiative of the data repository. So this is Delft University of Technology, Eindhoven University of Technology, and the University of Twente. And it's great to see that over the past decade or so, there's more than 8,400 technical science data sets that have been published within 4 u research data. And if we take a look at a snapshot of the portal, you can see that there are data sets from a diversity of different technical science disciplines. So from mathematics through to agriculture and veterinary sciences, from information and computing sciences to business and management. And so with this great diversity of different research disciplines, what we're aiming to do at 4 Research Data by working with the data stewards 
and to build the community of researchers is to, to really provide and work on tailored discipline specific solutions for data that is findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. And so whilst we have this technical infrastructure, we realize that the good infrastructure on its own is not enough to make research data fair. So we need to think about working with disciplinary experts, such as the data stewards. We need to think about working with researchers within disciplines and building disciplinary communities, because we appreciate that researchers need support and guidance on how to make data fair and ask questions about what is fair data for them. And they need training and workshops to really get to know the tools and services for how to deposit data using the repository and, and how to version control using GitHub and GitLab, for instance. So this brings me on to the question, why is data stewardship important? So as I mentioned, we have these three Dutch technical univer universities that are driving uh, the mission and vision of 40 research data. And each of these institutions have embedded data stewards within their faculties and departments. And the reason for this is, because we realize that proper research data management and organization is really a prerequisite for open science. So it's absolutely essential to research integrity and reproducibility. We've all heard now of the fair data principles, which were published in 2016. And these are now an increasing requirement of funders, journals, institutions, and policies around the world. And so if researchers have got to adhere and become compliant to the fair principles, then they really need some expert support to help them do this. We understand that researchers are really busy and they have a high academic workload, so they haven't got the time and they can't be expected to know about all of the latest tools, services and regulations and policies um, within their research institutions. And so again, data stewards can be there to help them understand. And then finally, with the sheer number of researchers and the large diversity of different research disciplines within these research intensive institutions, it can make it very challenging for institutional management to impose top down policy. And so it really helps having these boots on the ground embedded within faculties to drive the culture change towards better research data management um, and fair data. So the data stewards really are experts that sit within the third space. So they're linking between the support services and management to the researchers. So how is data stewardship organized? And this is a bit of a complex slide. So I'm just gonna walk you through this. This is only an example from TU Delft. Um, so the other institutions may have some slight subtle differences, but you can see here we have, um, we have in yellow, the 4 u Federation, we have in blue, the TU Delft Library, and then we have the faculties in purple. So there are different levels of organization when it comes to research data support at TU Delft. But if we look on the left at the 4 u Federation, as I mentioned before, we have the three technical universities that are uh, driving the initiative and the mission and vision. So we have members of these that sit on the steering board to, um, to really direct 4 u research data. And I should also mention that this membership model is actually open to new partners. So we hope in the near future that we can welcome other institutions to sit on the board and help direct the future of 4 u research data. So 4 u research data is also directed by Marta Teperek, who you can see pictured here. And Marta is also the head of research data services at TU Delft, so she wears two hats. She's directing 4 u research data, as well as the research data support team who are located centrally within TU Delft Library. And the library is there to provide generic support for researchers, so from, from basic advice to generic training, maintenance of the research data management website, and there are also team members, myself included, who are part of the research data support team who manage and maintain the infrastructure within 4 u research data. Also centrally coordinated within the library is the data stewardship coordinator, Yan Wang. 
So Jan is responsible for centrally coordinating eight data stewards who are full-time embedded staff members within the different faculties at TU Delft. And this was started in 2017. So the benefit of having central coordination means that Jan brings the data stewards together for weekly team meetings where they discuss the various updates from their faculties and departments. And the idea is that they feel like part of a team and that they can capitalize and, and identify with different syn synergies and commonalities, as well as subtle differences. Jan is also there to help the data stewards with their training and to really help them advance their personal and professional development. Jan as a coordinator is also there to connect the data stewards with the other services within the institution. So she's a linking pin between the data stewards, the central TU Delft library and the 4TU research data repository. But an interesting point to note, um, and it is quite a clever way that this is set up, is that the data stewards are actually line managed by their faculty executive secretary. So what this helps to do is embed the data steward at the local level so they feel supported and embedded within their own faculty and so they can get in contact with researchers more easily. What this also does is helps to raise the importance of data stewardship and research data management at the faculty level because it now puts it on the agenda and responsibility of the faculty dean and secretary. In addition, it also helps the data stewards to work at a very disciplinary level. They're in contact with their own faculty and the researchers, but at the same time, they are also regularly in contact as a team and they are also in contact with research data support and 4T research data. So I hope this gives an overview for how this like network and web of support helps the data stewards to integrate within the faculty and the institution more broadly. So now I'd like to give you an introduction as to who are the 20 data stewards that I have the privilege of working with at 4TU Research Data. So as I mentioned, we have Jan, who is the central coordinator, as well as eight data stewards at TU Delft that are embedded within faculties. So we have Case, who is a data steward in civil engineering and geosciences. We have Santosh in electrical engineering, maths and computer science. We have Yasmin in mechanical maritime and materials engineering. Recently, Diana joined us and she's in the architecture and the built environment faculty. We have Nicola in technology policy and management, Heather in aerospace, Jeff in industrial design and Esther in applied sciences. And as you can see in blue here as well, I've just identified some of their key interests um, that they've shown in their positions. Then if we move on to the University of 20, we also have five data stewards. So we have Chan, who is the coordinator. So Chan is like the equivalent of Yan at the University of 20. And Chan works in behavioral and social sciences as well as geoinformation and earth observation. So she's actually a data steward covering two different departments. We also have Mariana in electrical engineering, maths and computer science. So Mariana is like the equivalent of Santosh at 20. We have Simona in engineering and policy and technology. Judith is an information specialist who works in the tech med center as well. And then we have a new data steward who only started last, last week, this is Zafir, and he works on FAIR awareness. So his role is to raise awareness of the FAIR data principles. And then finally at Eindhoven, we have six data stewards. So we have Chef in the built environment and chemistry. So he's covering two departments. We have Sil, who covers three departments, mechanical engineering, applied physics and electrical engineering. We have Anna, who covers biomedical engineering and industrial design. And then Kiara, Fung and Floor are three data stewards that started earlier this year. So they've just finished their training and they're about to be embedded within their departments, but they also have uh, various interests already that they would like to pursue within their roles. So you can see that we have some differences and similarities so we can match make the data stewards 
by their discipline and also by their interest. And the idea by building this community of cross-institutional data stewards is to capitalize on the diverse and multidisciplinary skill set that they have to offer. So now I'd like to just show you briefly, uh, it's quite a simplified overview of what the data stewards do. So all of the data stewards have a PhD degree or an equivalent degree, and they have experience of the work that is undertaken within their particular faculty or department, which means that they can be quite comfortable as being full-time embedded in their faculty and disciplinary experts. And because they're disciplinary experts, they're in a very good position to drive disciplinary guidelines, workflows and policies at the faculty level. They're also the first point of contact for researchers. So they're there to answer questions and give advice. So they can give one-to-one -one in depth support for researchers and they're there to inform and inspire them. So they're there to persuade them of the benefits of good research data management and highlight the ways that they can achieve better research. So as I mentioned, they're there to answer queries and questions and this could be through email contact or through research data management training and workshops. This could be generic uh, training or also at the faculty or disciplinary level. So um, at these three institutions, it's now become mandatory that PhD students have to create a data management plan um, before they actually start their projects. So uh, many of the data stewards provide training on how to write a data management plan or a data paragraph. They can also advise on the budget plan. They're there to talk about the best ways to handle confidential or personally sensitive data. And they can also help with GDPR compliance, um, when to remove data, uh, to keep informed consent forms, for instance, and where they should be stored. These are all the kinds of things that the data stewards have to think about. And they're there to signpost the latest tools and services and solutions that are provided within the institution. And so to this end, they're there to help researchers with data storage, sharing and archiving. And this is where I can help at 40 research data um, by giving demonstrations and helping them help researchers publish their data. And as I mentioned, through the central coordination by being in contact with Jan, they're also in, connect in connection with the university services. So this could be the ICT, legal, ethics and privacy teams, as well as communication teams and the central library. And because they're in regular contact, they're the first point of contact for researchers, they're in a really nice position to be able to reward and recognise those who are going above and beyond for open science and good research data management practice. And so what we like to do is, I like to as a community manager, be in touch with the data stewards to communicate this on our social channels and in our monthly newsletter. And many of the data stewards actively write articles and blogs and also um, are active on social media. And then finally, um, because they're aware of the general trends within the institution, but open science more broadly, they can collect metrics and really understand the kind of impact that they have um, to feed back to the faculty and further develop the guidelines, workflows and policies. So I hope uh, that helps to give you an overview and I should just mention that this is a lot to cover for one data steward. Um, so some of the data stewards are more focused on different areas than others. It very much depends on the slide that we saw previously as to what their interest, skills and competencies are. So I'm just going to touch now um, on some of the training that is available for data stewards. So uh, we have this Essentials for Data Support training, which is run by the RDNL, and this is open to anybody. So um, around Europe would be able to attend this training. And um, it takes place three times per year at the moment online. And the idea is it takes the data steward through the research life cycle. So it's for data support staff on how to advise researchers on storing, managing, archiving and sharing data. Forty Research Data also has a collaboration with the Carpentries since 2018. So many of the data stewards have attended the carpet data software and data carpentries, 
where they've learned foundational coding and data science skills. And many of them have also become certified instructors so they can actually deliver disciplinary data carpentry workshops, for instance. Other thematic workshops that they have attended are workshops on privacy and GDPR, uh, data de-identification and anonymization, research ethics, uh, how to manage qualitative data, so like surveys and interview uh, data, for instance. They've attended workshops about the, the fair data principles, how to manage code through GitHub and GitLab, um, and also reproducible research. They're also welcome to attend any training that we have to offer about the data repository. So they'll learn about the benefits of publishing data, the available support services that are uh, uh, involved, and they also can have demonstrations on how to upload data, um, how to publish under restricted access, for instance, and how to register software through GitLab, which is a new integration that is actually coming this summer. And then finally, any additional training that the data stewards have attended is how to answer requests and give feedback on data management plans, uh, any storage solutions that are available within the ICT departments, any open access services with regards to publishing, again, managing code, um, persistent identifiers, and courses on patenting and intellectual property. And just to show you, uh, we have some exciting new collaborations. So in, with 40 research data, we have two data trainers. We have Paola and Irini, and we're in a collaboration at the moment working with data stewards on some of the uh, workshops and training that they might need to uh, advance their skills. So uh, this is actually coming soon and I can keep you updated if you're interested. So here are some thoughts of the day. So I thought this would be nice to share. Um, these are some quotes from data stewards on how they feel about their roles. So one data steward has mentioned to be effective in their role, they need to continuously learn new skills to support researchers in this fast evolving environment. So it's the idea that the role is not static, but it's dynamic and they're constantly having to learn new things. They find that whilst the formal training is important, that it's more informal and less structured. So the fact that they're learning on the job and one data steward actually said to me, it's a bit like building a plane whilst flying it. So they have to do things whilst always adapting uh, and learning new skills. Another data steward said that they gain their disciplinary expertise by attending conferences and webinars and building connections with researchers. And that mentorship is very important. So the fact that they're coordinated by a data steward, like data, data stewardship coordinator and their faculty line manager helps to mentor them in different ways. And also they raise the importance of internal peer support. So the weekly meetings and also social activities outside of work really help them to feel as part of a team. And the data stewards are also part of external networks. So again, the importance of the 40 research data community to keep them in touch with one another, but also they're members of the Research Data Alliance. And there's also the Dutch Tech Center for Life Sciences Data Stewardship Interest Group. So I think the importance of having some external influence can help them learn new skills um, and become experienced data stewards. So we realized that research communities and the data stewards and disciplinary problems cross institutional borders. So the three institutions, Delft, Eindhoven and Twente, always experience similar um, differences and challenges and problems. So we should collaborate when it comes to solving these issues. And this is why we've built the community of 40 research data. So for the next few slides, I'm going to give you an overview of the community that was established when I started my role in, in October last year. I'm going to give you an overview of some of the plans um, and then we can move on to some questions and answers. But so first of all, the community has begun to capitalize on discipline specific expertise. So uh, this is bringing the data stewards together from the 40 partner institutions primarily. 
And then in the future, what we'd like to do is involve researchers um, and other support staff from the open science communities and also the digital competency centers. So at TU Delft, we also have data managers and research software engineers that are part of the new digital competency center or DCC. And what we'd like to do is um, achieve this through engagement and education. So we've set up some working groups, which I'll talk to you about in a second. And we'd like to deliver training workshops and webinars to raise the awareness um, about these various open science topics. Something I'm very passionate about is reward and recognition. So we've established an online community, which I'll share with you shortly, where we share researcher stories and data support stories, as well as some repository statistics. And we also have the FAIR Data Fund. So 40 Research Data offers a budget of up to 3,000 euros, 3,500 euros, sorry, um, which researchers are, can, can actually apply for to prepare their data in order to make it available within the repository. Um, and we opened this in the spring. So the recent call has just closed and we'll be opening the next call in the autumn. And towards the end of this year, we're hoping to launch a fellowship program. So this will invite fellows from different institutions to collaborate with us on various fair data projects to advance the shared mission and vision of 4 research data. And then finally, the final one is consultancy. So as I mentioned, uh, we're opening the partnership model up to partners, gold, silver and bronze members. So we can help with consultancy if institutions want to uh, implement a data stewards program, for instance, or start up working groups and regular webinars, or indeed share researcher stories to reward and recognize those. So these are things, if you have any questions about any of these, then please feel free to ask. So now I'm just going to give you an overview of the community working groups. So as I mentioned earlier, we've brought the 20 data stewards together from the partner institutions um, as, as a 40 u research data data stewards network. And as I mentioned, the idea is to match make them based on their faculty or discipline and also their interest. So the idea is we want them to collaborate, empower one another, exchange ideas and best practices for how to support researchers. So we now have three working groups. The first one is fair and reproducible code. So this is a group that comes together once a month to talk about the various tools and training opportunities that are available. Uh, we plan regular events, including the carpentries. We talk about various ways to license and publish code, as well as how best to help researchers with version control. And what you can see in orange here is templates and teaching. So one of the things we're doing at the moment is devising a workshop for the data stewards uh, to come together so that we get a baseline understanding of fair and reproducible code and how to handle code. And then the idea is that we will develop a template that researchers can use with the minimum standard requirements for how to work on fair and reproducible code. Then we have a privacy and GDPR working group. So again, we, we meet once a month um, and we talk about how to archive personal and sensitive data. We also talk about informed consent, where those forms should be stored and how long they should be stored for, as well as the different legal and ethical workflows um, and privacy workflows that are present within those three institutions. So we're looking at the similarities and differences of how the data stewards operate. And then the final working group is engagement and education. So this group comes together on a monthly basis to talk about generic or disciplinary courses, any resources, activities and games that might be useful to engage researchers. And one of the outputs that we're working on at the moment is collecting disciplinary use cases. So the data stewards are um, sharing their experiences within their disciplines so that we can identify uh, similarities and differences and then tailor the, the support that we can offer for researchers. And now I'd like to just give you an overview of the online community. So since I started my role um, in the pandemic, everything's been virtual. So the first thing that I wanted to do was provide somewhere 
that we could share our updates um, and latest news events and opportunities. So I've just got a demonstration, which I hope will work. So you can see we have different events, um, updates, researcher stories that are published to the site. So we have a blog for the researcher stories, research support stories and collaborations. We have a page for the working groups and information about the Fair Data Fund. And we also have pages for the newsletter archives that go out each month, upcoming events and events that have happened in the past. And we have a page with the community members and information about the portal and how to deposit data. So if you head over to the community page, the idea was to give the members some impact and visibility and a place to showcase their interests. Um, so you can see we have the various different member profiles here. And what you can do is filter. So you can look by researcher, data steward, community manager, data manager, research software engineer, and research supporter. So if we take a look at some of the researcher pages, and I'm just going to show you an example of Nadia Blomendahl's page. So she's a researcher from VU. You can message her, connect with her, and look at her social media profiles. And then the idea is that we can see what her um, job title is. We can see that she works for VU in Amsterdam. We can see that she works on tropical cyclone data. She's linked her 40 research data data sets and her email address. So you can check her data sets uh, and you can send her an email if you have any questions. So I think this is a nice way to give them a, a page and put a face to the data set. If we look at the groups page, you can now see that you can read more um, and have a look at the various different working groups and collaborations that we have developing as part of the community. So um, we also have a Slack channel where most of the communications goes on, but this is quite nice to have some public presence to show anybody externally what is happening. And if we head to the blog, I'm just gonna show you an example of a researcher story. Um, so you can see, from this page here now, we have the most recent story making Operation Air Data Fair. So this is where a cohort of master students last year developed a COVID-19 ventilator and they've made all of their hardware technical designs and their software code available on 40 research data. And you can read through the article and you can then take a look at the data set. So the idea is to reward and recognize data as a research output, give impact and visibility to community members, allow connections between different stakeholders. So bring in researchers with data managers, data stewards, librarians, IT support, et cetera. And to give them some public presence so that we can actually inform and inspire this um, with external, you know, to the external audience. So it's not just an internal community. We'd like to showcase the work that is going on. And then a final thing I'd like to share is the monthly newsletter. So this um, goes out towards the end of each month. So as I mentioned, we share the researcher stories. Uh, we share the research support stories. We also include any updates from the repository. So. In this case, we have a new repository feature of an integration with GitLab that is coming this summer. We also advertise any opportunities, so vacancies to join the partner or member institutions or invitations to be involved in any other initiatives that might be going on. And we also advertise any new recruits. So for instance, if we have new members, new data stewards that have joined the team, we also give them a, a spot in the monthly newsletter. We also advertise and write up any events that we've attended that we enjoyed. Um, and we also signpost any upcoming events. So if you're also interested in keeping up to date, you can subscribe to the newsletter and see what we get up to. Um, and a final thing I'd like to share is a new initiative that we started this month, which is called Data in the Spotlight. So every month, we have, did you see these data sets? So this is an overview of the monthly top downloaded data set from the three partner institutions. Um, so I contact the data owners and usually just, um, you know, get their permission to share this, but 
This is then published each month within the newsletter. And every Wednesday, we have your daily dose of data. So every week, I work with our communications officer, Deirdre Casella, and we publish a tweet about one of the most recent data sets. So we're trying to really uh, reward and recognize data by doing this. And at the end of this month, on Friday the 30th of April, at half past 10 at Central European time, we're having our first ever community call, building a culture of collaboration, where I will introduce the community, we will have updates from the three working groups, and then we have an invited speaker, Malvika Sharan from the Turing Way, to come and talk to us about cultures of collaboration. So again, I'd like to open this up to you. If you're interested in attending, uh, I can pop the link in the chat or you can have a look at the slides and register to attend. And on that note, I would like to thank you for your attention 